Hi, everyone. We are the DC Day Swing Traders Meetup Group. We meet once a, a month on Zoom. We have over 1,690 members. Today, our guest keynote speaker is William White. William is an equ or, or Bill is an equity trader for over four decades and has been a member of the DC area day swing traders for over 10 years. Bill will lend some technical insight into day trading leveraged ETFs. Bill, take it away. Hi, I'm Bill White. Um, so before I get started, I want to do like an 18 second history on how I unearthed leveraged ETFs. So I'm a federal employee and I get about two days of two days a week of telework. So I got interested in day trading through Robert, our illustrious host. And so that limited my day trading to about eight or nine days a month. And I wanted to get the biggest bang for my buck. So I started looking into leveraged ETFs and that's where this has spawned from. Okay, let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> Not sure if people can see that. So I have some definitions. Um, leveraged ETFs are financial they use financial derivatives and debt to amplify returns of their underlying indexes. And in these examples, it'll be three times. Um, another definition is a long lower shadow candlestick. Um, it's a technical indicator, especially in patterns um, Robert called them pullbacks last week. In a pullback, when this particular candle pops, it's indicative of a trend reversal. And I'm going to show you some strong examples here coming up. Next slide. Okay. Um, also of note is something called the Williams percentage R. This is a metric that I've been using for swing trading and long-term investment trades for probably 20 years. It's been around almost five decades and it is a leading indicator. A lot of the more popular metrics like the MACD are lagging the indicators, but this thing is spot on. It's also important to know about volume spikes. Um, in a momentum trade, when you have a volume spike, especially a, a, a buying um, where people are coming in and buying, it accelerates the momentum of the index or the ETF dramatically. And again, I'm going to show some examples. And then finally, the V pattern. A V pattern is where a stock or an index starts out strong and then pulls back and drops rapidly. And then it establishes a base and that becomes my entry point. So, and then I'll, I'll get to my strategy in a second with that. Next slide, please. Okay, so these are the types of leveraged ETFs that I target. They're all triples. Um, in a positive market where everything's going green, I go for triple bulls and on a red day, I'm looking at triple bears. These are all, this is only a small uh, snapshot of the available ETFs out there. Um, but they're ones that I 
They're my favorites. <clears throat> and you'll notice that they're also sector specific, um, which is how I target my um, ETF that I'm following. Um, again, Robert with his gap, gap up and gap down strategies. Um, if a stock beats or misses, and it's a popular um, stock in a particular sector, it can oftentimes pull the whole sector with it. Not always, but oftentimes. And that's where I started targeting the sector-specific ETFs. Next slide, please. Okay, so here's the strategy. Um, I establish a watch list between 845 and 930. Um, so I get a feel for what the market's doing. And what I'm trying to do is pull out the big percentage gainers with those um, examples that I showed you on the previous slide. Let's say one of them's up 5% or another one's up 10%. Those are the ones I'm going to key on, but they may not be the ones that I actually um, end up going with. And I'll show you why in a second. Um, so I wait for the pullback. Um, Robert kind of touched upon this. If a stock is gapping up, you don't know how high it's going to go before it runs out of momentum. So my target point is the, the base of the V bottom. And again, I'll show you some examples. I also look for confirmation with those pullbacks. So I'm looking for a long lower shadow candlestick. Um, a volume spike and or the Williams percentage are. Now, you don't usually get all three at once at the base of the V bottom, um, but you can get one or two of these, which are very strong um, indicators. What happens with the V pattern is once it establishes the base, it invariably goes back up to where it started from. And if it, if it um, exceeds that point, then there'll be continuation after that. So there's also an exit strategy associated with this. I have targets of um, two to 3%. Um, and I use a trailing stop loss of 3%. So that's my exit strategy. Next slide, please. Hey, Bill, can I ask a question now or? Sure, anytime. Yeah, could you go back to the last slide? Sorry. My strategy. Yeah, so um, the, you see that the third line where you said with added confirmation. So are those lines, the long lower shadow, candlestick, volume spike, Williams, are those all confirmations you're looking at? Yeah, so once the, I'm gonna know it's a base when one or all three of these are in play. Um, and like several months from now, when I do swing trades with leveraged ETFs, I'll also talk about this, where the you establish an entry point based on the candle that you're looking at with the long lower shadow candlestick. What has happened in the one minute time period is you have a large breadth of activity but the exit activity out of that one minute interval is screaming 
towards the top of the candle. And then when you have the associated volume spike with it, um, that's more significant than any other volume that has happened up until that point, that volume is going to accelerate the momentum. So I'm looking for a momentum trade off of a base. The Williams percentage R is at an oversold point. So it trades from zero to a negative 100. And a negative 80 is the threshold that I'm looking for. It's a negative 80 or greater. Did that answer your question? Yes, yes, that's great. Also, what is the, is that a stop loss? What's the TSL on the last line? What does that mean? Yeah, I should have um, used the acronym when I did the definition. So that's a trailing stop loss oh. of 3%. Because um, in a trade like these, I, I'm not looking to lose more than 3%, but that's also my target point. Um, so in my examples, I'm going to show you how a trailing stop loss can either protect you and or help you. I think we're ready for the next slide. Are these slides clear? I think they're clear. Okay. So this was trade one, and it happened to coincide on the day that um, Russia invaded Ukraine. Um, the market, or at least these particular ETFs, hadn't um, been that dramatically impacted yet. So the first trade was on a triple bull for semiconductors. Um, this is one of my favorites. And the trade I took, if you can see this, so right at about three o'clock, I had a double Williams bottom. And I also had a volume spike on the bottom of a, of a V. So this, it's a positive market. This thing was already up probably 5%. It lost a little, and then I came in. And what happened is I got my 2% real quick. Part of my exit strategy is once I get to 2%, I sell, immediately sell half. Um, and I do that because I want to lock in profits. That works for me, and that oftentimes works against me, and I'll show you some examples. In this example, I took the 2% and holding the remaining 50% of, of my investment, it went up another, um, oh, my numbers are bad, and I can't see. <laughs> Um, it went up another, what, 5%. So I ended up that day with a, um, a gain of about 2.5%. Now, had I held it and let my uh, trailing stop loss kick in, in fact, it wouldn't have kicked in, um, I would have gotten more profit. But again, I'm only shooting for 2 to 3%. And from a day trade perspective, if there's 20 trading days per month, 2% is 40% return on investment, which is hit, hitting every single trade, which is theoretically impossible. But if I get 25, if I get 30%, in a in a third in a month, that's what I'm looking for, and I'm not trying to get more. 
Okay, next slide, please. There it is. Okay, this one is perfect for the V trade. So this one was Ethan's favorite called Labu. It's the triple biotech bull. And initially it started out, went up out of the gate and then started screaming down. It came down to about 15 and there was a huge volume spike that was probably higher Definitely higher than anything that day, maybe anything that week. My Williams was also a confirmation, and I took the trade. About halfway through the upsurge at about 15.5, I took 50% off the table. Um, that was about three and a quarter percent. Um, and then it went up another. Uh, four or five percent. And I got that, I think I got out of that trade with about four and three quarters because I took a little loss. Um, candles are very important. So on the top of that V, once it eclipsed the starting point to the left, it had a tail on one of the candles. And when you look at the picture, and maybe you can't see it on the screen because it's so small, but there's a significant tail um, that's the inverse of that long lower. In fact, this one's called a long upper shadow candlestick. And that one is telling me that the upsurge has reached an ebb and it's going to start coming down and oftentimes rapidly. So that's when I start selling off that remaining 50%. Sometimes it happens so quick. I lose a half a percent or even a percent while I'm trying to get back out of this trade and the trailing stop loss never executes. Okay, next slide. Oh, Bill, I just wanted to mention, um, I like Labu, but the problem with Labu is when you buy it, the, there's a, uh, a wide spread between the ask and the bid. So what the price it is at and what you can get it at are two different stories. So it's sort of tricky. Right. And it has to do with the momentum. So as it's going down, um, those prices are being adjusted kind of rapidly. Um, and then you get the base of that V. Okay, so trade number three. Um, this might be the last of the bulls because again, Russia was going into Ukraine. Um, so it's Labu on, on day three. And I took the trade at the bottom. How did I know it was a bottom? I had two huge volume spikes that were both green that told me that people were coming in with huge amounts of money. Uh, my Williams had also had a double bottom at this point. I got in the trade and I quickly got out and my day's earnings was two and a half percent. But I did not get the whole, let's see, one is six. I did not get the six percent. So had I let the trailing stop loss sit there, it would not have taken me out. I could have gotten that second upsurge and gotten a whole 6%.
and instead I got about two and a half percent. Um, and towards the end of my presentation, I'll tell you why that could be significant or not. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, this one, I started switching the bears because the market was starting to scream down. And the semiconductors invariably techs move with the market or they move more. And so my trade here was on the triple bear semiconductor. I had the long lower shadow candlestick and I had a double Williams bottom um, kind of right out of the gate, went up, went screaming down and then boom. I didn't get the volume confirmation, but that candlestick is a good substitute for not having a volume spike. So on this particular trade, <clears throat> I got my two, my 3%. Um, I, I took the ride back down and I went back up and I ended the day with three and a quarter percent. Um, let's see, what was the ride? I'm not sure but that, that was my day's activity. Next slide, please. Wednesday, March 2nd. So something, something happened and I gratefully missed my entry point. There was a double bottom at about 10.30. And normally I would have took that, but I missed it. So I had to wait for another entry point. And So I was waiting for Williams and I was waiting for the volume spikes. I caught the volume spikes. There was a double bottom a little bit after 11. I think it was 11.05. And I caught that with the double volume spike and rode that and got, I got two and a half percent. Um, but I also took a loss and it came back down to about 2.1. So I got a little over 2%, which is my target for a single, single trade that's acting as a day trade. Next slide, please. I think I'm gonna make it. Okay, this was my birthday. And I don't think I caught all of this because I was on the way to a birthday brunch. Happy birthday. <laughs> so exactly 10 o'clock, you can see the B bottom hit. And if you look down at Williams, Williams is almost a negative 100. Didn't have a volume spike, but I started getting some up candles and I took it. Um, the stock, this is a triple bear semiconductor. So the market, I can't remember what the market was, but every day it's either down 200 or up 500. I mean, it's crazy. So the market, if 
by um, 10 o'clock was probably already super red. And this thing wasn't, um, it wasn't really doing what the market was. It started out going up high, but then it came creaming, creaming back down. So I got in at the bottom, maybe another click or two higher. And this was my most profitable trade of these examples. So I got just about all of this. I got 5% on this trade. Um, so as it's going up, after it's hitting 2%, 3%, I'm selling. I'm selling 10% of the remaining 50%, almost like every two minutes or every minute. So as it's going up, I'm reducing my exposure to the trade. So I'm selling into momentum. And I think it was either you, Ethan, or Carl that says that you should never sell into momentum. And that often hurts me, but it also protects me because I've exceeded my targets. Okay, next slide, please. We should be on. This is day trade eight. Um, day trade eight is four and a half percent. I believe my entry point was the long lower shadow candlestick at approximately nine forty five. So it went down, went up, and then came back down again. But as soon as I saw that candlestick, I jumped on this. This again is the triple semiconductor bear. And let's see. Hey, Bill, real quick. Yeah. I like the way these are your confirmations. So you're seeing all this in real time the way right. you have it stacked. This is great. Um, what plot, just for everyone's edification, what platform are you using? What platform am, am I using? The, to get this data. So you're, you're seeing all this in real time for your entries and your confirmation, as you pointed so, out earlier. So I'm in, uh, I'm in Fidelity. And I oftentimes use their actor Trader Pro. Um, but I can't really do that on my cell phone. So I'm looking at, I'm in Fidelity and I'm also looking at Market Watch. I'm looking at Yahoo. Um, Yahoo is kind of a laggard. Market Watch is um, almost like a one for one. So I can see these candles rip off one after another. Um, so let's see, day trade eight was another, I almost hit 5%. I think my exit point. Let's see, two is four. So I got to 4% within 
I don't know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. I took the ride, took the ride back up again. And I think I sold when I saw the long upper shadow candlestick. Um, I should have kept it because I could have gotten a lot more. Okay. The stock that day, or at least during this run, almost went up like eight or nine percent, but I didn't get the whole eight or nine percent. I did get 4.75 though. What time was your entry on this one? Um, it was kind of early. It was about um, 9.45, not quite 10 o'clock. I think we're looking at the same. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just trying to understand so I can learn from you. So on the Williams, when it you bought about when it went down to almost, it looks like almost minus 100. Is that where you entered? No. no. I didn't have the Williams confirmation. I went off of the candlestick at the bottom of the second V. So the stock came out and immediately went down. I mean, it just flattened. And then it had a sudden upsurge right up to the point where it opened at. And then it came down again. The point where it came down and I caught my candlestick, that candlestick is one of the most important drivers for me. Because that candlestick is telling me that momentum's about to change. And it's, it's going to go in the other direction. Rarely do you catch that candlestick and then you have continued downsurge. It's almost a reversal point. Great, thank you. Um, Robert calls them tails. When they're on the top of an upsurge, I call it hair because it looks like little hair at the top of a, at the ebb or the top of a upsurge. Looks like a little pieces of hair. Okay, next slide. All righty. I think this. So this is what I didn't get by being conservative. I missed out on like 15%. So the market went down so far that day. And these triples um, go down even more rapidly. If the market's down 2%, these guys are down 10% or 8%. Well, this thing ended up going down or going up. I should say, because it's a bear, um, like 15%. But I did not get that. I got four and a, 475. And 475 is double what my target is. So am I unhappy that I didn't get it at all? Yes. But then again, I'm trading. Um, I'm trading such a significant amount of money that I would rather get to four percent and then turn it around and look for another trade um, on an another day. But I'm just showing you what you could have gotten. Say if you're coming in with a thousand dollars or five thousand, you may have wanted to take the whole trade and give most of that fifteen percent, um, because uh, the the loss on a on a thousand dollars is kind of negligible. But if you're going a hundred thousand and you're doing twenty five thousand, it's a whole different ballgame. 
Okay, next slide, please. All righty, this, this is Carl's, this is in Carl's League, where oil started uh, screaming up and it went from like 80 to 130 within a week or two. And on this trade, I got all of it. And I was so determined to get all of it this day. So I got in at the consolidation point of the bottom, the V bottom. And the only thing I had going for me was Williams. I didn't have volume confirmation. But once it started going back up again, I knew that oil was ripping. And I kept this thing all the way just about to its top. And I ended up that day, let's see, trade nine, with eight and a half percent. Um, so it wasn't 10%, but I got all of this. And if you can see at the top, at the very top of the, um, at the highest top, there's a long upper shadow candlestick. Ooh, I've just exceeded my limit. So where do we go from here? Should I wrap it up? Ethan? I have to unmute. How many more slides do we have? Um, maybe four. Oh, keep going. I'd say keep going. Just to let everyone know we're at uh, 933. But just uh, keep going and finish up. This is okay. really good. Next slide. Trade 10. This one can be quick because I did not trade that day. Um, so I telework and oftentimes work gets in the middle of these trades. So I'm not always able to take the entry points that I wanted to. I couldn't get the first V and I couldn't get this, the subsequent Vs. This was a non-trading day. Um, one of the things that Robert talked about was doing multiple trades during the day. So if I had traded two of these Vs, I could have gotten multiple percentages. Um, and then when you add those two percentages together, you get you get to higher than the 2% return, then you talk about six, eight, 10%. Um, but with the blocks of money that I'm trading, I can't come in multiple times and I don't do margin. Okay, next slide. Trade 11. Um, I like your dedication, Bill. You could have said, that the uh, trades get in the way of my work. But what you said was, work gets in the way of my trades. And it should. Um, okay, so here I, I was totally off on this one. So it works for me, it works against me. I took the first V because I had my candle at approximately 9.55. So I had that first long lower shadow candlestick, which told me that I was at the, at the base of the down search. And when that candle popped and I had a volume spike and Williams was completely oversold, I said, that's my entry point. So I took it and I got the 2% 
And then I couldn't get out quick enough because I was determined to ride this thing higher. And it wasn't going to go higher. So I lost a little bit more. I didn't let myself get stopped out. I sold and I ended the day with um, 1.75. Would I have gotten stopped? I think I would have gotten stopped out with the 3% had I rode that second down surge. Um, I think that's more than a percent and a half. So I would have gotten stopped out there. But the, looking at this, it looked like the better entry point was the second V. Um, but I wasn't there and I didn't do the multiple entry points that Robert would have done. Okay, next slide. Uh. Okay, trade number 12. Where did I come in? I came in at the double bottom. at about 9.45. Um, so candlestick patterns are important to me. When I get double bottoms, um, that's really significant. If I get a double top, I'm bailing triple tops. I'm never around for a triple top. <laughs> Um, what did I get here? I ended up trade number 12, which is my last trade with three and a half percent. I think I got all of the upsurge and then a little bit more. But on the next slide, I believe. Yes. So I got three and a half percent. And I was out by about 10, 15. Now, had I kept this thing all day, here's another example of something that went up 12 to 15%. I think it ended up today 16%. So I didn't get 16%. I got three and a half percent. A different trader could have gotten this entire ride. So I'm at the end of my slides. So the 11 trades taken over a 12 day period netted 40 over 40%. But you can see how much I left on the table. There were days where I settled for two, I could have gotten six. Um, a couple real biggies. I settled for three and I could have gotten 16. So it's an example of, I call it market timing. And there's like adages that you can't time the market. And I beg to differ. I think if you use the right uh, technology, with the right confirmations, you can absolutely target the market and time the market. Um, and I happened upon this five years ago when I was doing, starting to do the day trades. And in these last two years, now that we've been teleworking, mandatory telework daily, I've been doing practically daily uh, day trade. So that's all I have. Are there any other questions? Does anyone have any questions for Bill? Does anybody left? <laughs> no, no, everyone's here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a one question. Hello, uh, everyone. 
Uh, William, I have one question for you. So what is your, um, I know you, you, you stop losses or you try to stop is 2% or 3% around that. Right. So, but if you have to, let's see do the double bottom or start, or didn't work out because you don't have no volume. So how much will be your, I mean, the maximum stop loss that you will risk? In a position, I so like. interesting enough with these 12, actually 11 trades, not once did I get stopped out. Um, and I think only one of these trades would have gotten stopped out during the course of the trading period. Um, but if, if, if and when I'm wrong and it continues to scream down, like it's not the base of a V and it keeps going down, 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 the max I'm going to lose is 3%. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Just... 3% of a thousand is $30. 3% of 10 grand is $300. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay, that's it. That I that was my my question. Thank you. Yep. Does anybody else have any questions or this was great, Bill. Thank you so much. It was fascinating. You're welcome. Yeah, there's a lot to process each day to make that trade correct. So, but I, it's interesting that you showed how because the Williams percent came up in one of our meetings about two years ago, three years ago. Uh, but it's interesting how you showed how effective it can be if you use it right. Oh, yeah. Especially for swing trading. Um, it becomes even more effective. Yeah. So uh, is there anything else or... Do we still have Carl on or I think we lost Carl. Um, anyway, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I wanted to mention two things. It looks like Angel isn't on now. So we won't be able to do the charts, but I did want to mention two things. Since April, he and BW, Babcock and Wilcox. I just wanted to mention and wrap up because I, I can't not mention it. So Nokia uh, is doing great. They had tremendous earnings. They dividend and they also have a buyback. So the stock started to go up, but because of the whole Ukraine thing, everyone's worried that Russia is going to invade Finland. So the stock's been going down. Um, I didn't have a chance. I was driving today to see uh, where it was today. Yesterday, it did go up. Uh, but I just wanted to mention that. Uh, they had tremendous earnings with a profit of 30 cents. And we've been following this one since April. Um, and they're on an upswing and they're doing really great stuff. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in that trade. I'm in Nokia and BW. And uh, so just take a look at it. All right. And if you have a chain missed because of the limited internet, but now that I'm back in Maryland, I hope to listen to it. Um, but they did really well. And just to remind everyone, I had mentioned that their driver was always the cost of operations. When the cost of operations is high, uh, they have a loss. When the cost of operations is lower, they have a profit. So uh, they made 30 cents and they have a huge pipeline they announced, over a billion dollars of projects. So they're, they're hitting on all cylinders and they've made about 100 million in contracts in the last five months. You can look under press releases and see that. So um, again, they do uh, renewable energy and oil and gas. So it's a way to play both sectors at the same time. They have this bright loop technology and they also have some hydrogen stuff uh, going on. So I just wanted to mention that. Unfortunately, Angel's not on and we can quickly look at the charts. 
Um, and it looks like Carl's not on either. So um, I guess we'll wrap it here. But thank you all for coming. Thank Tree again. And thank Bill again. Our two guest speakers today were tremendous. And uh, we'll see you all next month. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep checking the meetups uh, for information. And thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now.